Hi, I'm Michael Swig, and this summer I participated in the SHURE program. I'm standing in front of the North Campus Research Complex, where I conduct research on aqueous two-phase systems under Professor Takayama. Today, I will show you a dextrinase ATPS cell migration assay that I've been working on. Well, what are we waiting for? Follow me. I'm currently in the lab, where I will be demonstrating a cell migration assay. However, before we begin, we must first have an understanding of what an aqueous two-phase system is. An aqueous two-phase system, or ATPS, as shown on the image on the left, is formed when two immiscible polymers, or salts, are mixed at a particular concentration and temperature. Due to high interfacial tension between the two phases and a variety of other factors, the two phases will separate and an interface will form between them. In the cell migration assay, the two polymers used are dextrin, also known as dex, and polyethylene glycol, also known as PEG, as 10% solutions in PBS and culture media respectively, at room temperature. In this experiment, each of the wells is spotted with dex and then filled with PEG, as shown in the image on the right. In this experiment, dextrinase was added into the dex solution prior to patterning and dehydrating the dex with the dehydrated droplet shown in the top image. Upon hydration of the dex phase by addition of PEG and the cells, the cells settle around the dex droplet due to the interfacial tension between the two phases, as shown by the second image. While hydrated, the dex is digested by the dextrinase, causing interfacial tension to lower, eventually forming one phase, creating a wound. This is shown in the third image. Furthermore, the concentration of dextrinase added to the dex was modified so that the dex and peg phase would form one phase after three to four hours following hydration, allowing ample time for the cells to settle. We're now in the cell culture room, where a plate is being spotted with dex. Using a sci bio program I created earlier this summer, four dex droplets, to be the wounds, are being spotted one at a time. The droplets are then allowed to dry. Shown in the diagram are four dex droplets in a single well. Taking the cells that have been prepared, a hemocytometer is needed in order to determine the correct fraction to be used of the total number of cells grown. If too few cells are used, the wells won't be effectively patterned. If too many cells are added, the wells will be overseeded and the cells won't attach properly. After pipetting the correct number of cells into the PEG solution, the PEG cell solution is pipetted up and down to thoroughly distribute the cells throughout the solution. The PEG cell solution is then pipetted into each patterned well along the sides of the wells in order to avoid disturbance of the dex pattern. It is also important to always pipette gently along the sides of the wells in order to avoid damaging the cells or disturbing the dex droplets. By now the cells have already settled down and the dex has already been digested by the dextrinase. At this point, the PEG is to be aspirated and replaced with culture media. While there are multiple ways to conduct the wash step, if at all, the method that seems to work the best is forcefully pipetting media into each well in order to mix the polymer and media. The PEG polymer mixture is then aspirated out, leaving a shallow layer to shield the cells from any shear force generated by further pipetting. Media is then added into each of the wells, and the initial images of each of the wells is taken. Shown on screen is an example of one such well. Shown is an example of a cell migration using fluorescent microscopy over the course of 72 hours. Once the images at each time point of the cell migration have been taken, the images are analyzed using the ImageJ program. Using the data collected from the images, such as area and eccentricity of the wound, the rate of cell migration can be identified. With this dextrinase cell migration assay, Testing of pharmaceutical drugs and topical treatments that are aimed at counteracting cell migration associated with malignant spreading of cells and the healing of wounds will likely be simplified. However, further trials must be conducted to optimize this process. So that's the cell migration assay. Once again, I'm Michael, and thanks for watching.